Welcome to our lesson on lines and angles. All right, you can see here that we've got a diagram here. And even though that these are segments, we know that segments are a part of lines. We're going to assume that these go on forever. So if they ask you, what are parallel lines? Well, first I want to show you the symbol for parallel is two upright lines like this. And parallel lines do not intersect. So if we're going to do an example of parallel lines in this picture, we could say that Line EF, have that symbol for line above it, is parallel to line, if I looked at this one, AB. There's an example of parallel lines. Perpendicular lines, the symbol for perpendicular lines, looks something like this, kind of an upside down T. Remember, perpendicular line means that they form right, uh, form right angles, so intersect, Two form right angles. All right, which again add up to 90 degrees. Again, there's that little symbol for our right angle. So we look at this picture. If I looked at BD, line BD, I could say that that is perpendicular to line CD. So again, I would say that line CD, excuse me, line BD. And I'll do the segment symbol this time, is perpendicular to line CD. Again, I use the, the segment symbol there. Skew lines, this one's this one might be new. Alright? They do not intersect. They do not intersect and are not parallel. All right, they're also non-coplanar, and we'll talk about what that means. But if I looked at AC, I could say that AC, well, where's a line that it's not parallel to and does not intersect? I would say GH. So if I was going to do that on the side here, I would say that line AC and line GH are skew lines. And then finally, parallel planes. Well, we can do that by just kind of highlighting parallel planes, just like parallel lines. They do not intersect. So this plane right here would be parallel to our plane on the top. And again, I can highlight all of that. It's all of that. And remember, when you label planes, you need three points. So we'd say you could, an example would be plane. I'll call it AEF on top. And plane... GCD. Okay, those would be parallel planes. So, all right, on to the next part. Going to be a little review, but it's worth remembering. All right, when we have intersecting lines, we got to remember what vertical angles are and what linear pairs are. Vertical angles, those are the angles that are across from each other. One and three would be an example. Remember that vertical angles are congruent. Linear pairs, well, those are the ones that add up to 180. So if I said well, angle one, it would go with angle two, and they add up to form a line. So again, just remember they add to 180. We're going to remember they call that supplementary. Everything today is going to either be congruent or supplementary that we'll soon learn. All right, so what is a transversal? All right, a transversal. A transversal is a, what you need to know is line that intersects two or more lines. or more lines. Now you know that definition. Here's the diagram. It's really easy to see. I'll highlight in red. This would be a transversal. It is a line that intersects more than two lines. This, there's one line right here. There's another line right here. All other things that you need to know is the area outside the two lines that it intersects. We call the exterior. We've used that word before. And just remember that area in between the two lines inside we call the interior. Okay, now we know the vocab, we're going to learn about the angle relationships formed by transversals. So here we go. First, now all these names, nice part is they kind of tell you what they are. So first one we're going to look at is corresponding angles. Corresponding on the first one. And what you need to remember for corresponding, the, the word remember is same spot. They're angles that are in the same spot. This is probably actually the hardest of the uh, angle relationships, so we're doing it first. 
if you notice, every time you have a transversal in two lines, all right, it forms eight angles. Okay, so if I put a box around these four and a box around these four, notice there's kind of four areas and corresponding angles are in the same spot. So if I look at angle one, if I call that like the top left, which, which angle is the top left of the bottom set of angles? Well, it would be five. So we'd say angle one and angle five would be corresponding. Okay, uh, quick little side note, these symbols right here, those are the parallel, we call those parallel tick marks. They do not mean congruent. That's the symbol for parallel. If you see that, you know the lines are parallel. But getting back to our examples here, what are, what are some other corresponding uh, angles? We could name a bunch. If I picked eight, all right, which would be a vertical angle of five, well, which angle corresponds, which is in the same spot in the other set of angles? Well, that'd be four. So we'd also say angle four and angle eight. There's a couple other, obviously, but I just want to give you an idea. Okay, alternate. Now, the rest of these, the name tells you what they are. Okay, and this one, alternate means opposite side of the transversal. Interior means inside of the transversal. So let's take a look at which sets would be alternate interior. So since I'm only looking at the interior, I'm looking at this angle. Let's say I'm looking at these angles, three. Okay, everything in between the lines. Well, which side's on the opposite side and the interior? Six. Okay, three and four wouldn't be because those would be linear pairs. So angle three and angle six. What would be the other set? Well, if I looked at four, that would go with five. So angle four and angle five. Alternate interior angles. Again, alternate sides of the transversal in between the, inter and the parallel lines. Alternate exterior. Again, there's that word alternate. So we know we're going to be on opposite sides of the transversal. This time it's exterior, which means outside. So if I look at angle one, it's on the outside. Which angle would be alternate exterior? That would be angle eight. So angle one and angle eight. What would be the other set? Well, if I pick two, which side is angle seven is alternate angle two. Those are alternate exterior. Next sets, all right? Same side interior, same side exterior. I'll get on the screen at the same time. And the name tells you where to look. Same side of the trans, same side of the transversal. Interior means inside the the uh, intersect the lines that are intersected. So if I looked at angle three, what would go with angle three? Same side and on the interior. Well, that'd be five. So we'd say angle three and angle five. Again, sometimes they're called consecutive, but we're going to be calling them same side just because it's just more descriptive. Four and six would be the other set. Angle four and angle six. Same side exterior. Now that you know the name literally tells you where to look, all right? Well, let's look at the exterior here. Again, same side exterior. You can probably already figure out one and seven. Angle one and angle seven. And you guys now can probably figure out what the other set would be as well. I want to get to the other relationships here. All right. Oh, that, that actually is it. So I might as well show you the other one too. So we're going to go two and eight. Angle two and angle eight. So there are the angle relationships formed by transversals and two or more lines.